Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? All right. Good morning. I want to say good morning to, to those of you joining us online as well this morning as the people in house find their seats. And uh, I hope you can hear me this morning online. If you can hear me, maybe maybe tap a thumbs up in the in the chat so we can see that you're uh, hearing us this morning. I apologize. We had some technical difficulties last week, but uh, we're 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 believing that you'll be able to hear me quite well today, and so uh, welcome to those of you watching online today, and welcome to those of you here uh, in-house. There's a couple things. We, we continue, actually, in the season of Easter. We're just having a discussion about that this morning, but Easter is a season that stretches all the way from Easter Sunday to, to, the, to the Sunday of Pentecost, and so uh, we'll be exploring some Easter passages today, or post-resurrection passages, as I call them, and I'm excited to share the good news of Jesus Christ with you today. So uh, thanks, thanks for being here this morning. A couple things from our newsletter that I want to share with you. Um, we've kind of hit, I don't know, for me, uh, a little bit of, a, I don't want to call it a milestone, but another mark in our capital campaign. We're counting down the final $20,000 that we need, and, and we, we um, are now at only needing $13,891 of the $20,000 that we're, uh, we're, we still have remaining. That's actually not up. Yeah, it is updated. So we are under $14,000 now, so praise God, right? And uh, we'll just keep working at that. Uh, I would like to um, inform you that the Action Task Force did meet with uh, uh, the architect this week, and we uh, worked through the details of the plan that he's going to send out for, uh, for bids to the contractors, and so that's underway, and so that's all kind of in flight right now, as, uh, as we would say, and we'll give you more updates as things become more apparent as to what's going on or, or the timeline there, I should say. A couple other things that I want you to be aware of, I, I ask that you continue to pray with me and set time aside uh, and pray for the big rocks that we talked about at our annual meeting. One of them is the remodeling, but another is the, uh, the Celebrate Recovery service that's going to be starting here. Um, you can pray directly uh, this week for a startup meeting that's happening. Um, it's just the, the group is coming together to kind of, kind of start up plans for what it will look like to prepare um, for that, so it's not the start of Celebrate Recovery, but it's the leader's startup meeting, and so they'll be going through a process of that, so pray for that, and then the Mosaic Church uh, plant in Chambersburg, we're, we're kind of planning a church, uh, coming alongside of a few people that are already there, and we're working through the details of that, and conversations are taking place, and uh, just be praying for God's wisdom and discernment in that, and uh, that people uh, would discern if they should or shouldn't be involved in that, so uh, we're going to advance the kingdom of God in Chambersburg, and we praise God for the opportunity to do that. Uh, we do have a, a chicken barbecue fundraiser dinner coming up that benefits uh, missions and missions trips, and so that's happening. It's Saturday, May 4th. The pickup is 11 to 2 p.m. Uh, you need to place your orders either by going online uh, in the newsletter or on our webpage under the events tab, or you can call or just approach April, would you raise your hand, April or Mary Alice, um, and, and let them know what you want to order. The orders are due by April 24th, so you have 10 days. You have 10 days yet to order chicken if you want to support missions in that way. Um, and then I just want to let you know about uh, membership class. Several people have asked me about uh, joining the church and becoming a member, and so we have membership classes that are taking place uh, the next three Sundays. So next Sunday... We'll meet uh, right back here in MPR 2 at 11.45. Lunch will be provided, and uh, we'll work through um, just uh, so the history of the church, the theology of the church, ways you can get involved in the church. And so if you're interested in that, uh, let me know after service today or by texting because we, we have to pre prepare enough food for everybody. So uh, if you could let me know, that would be great. Um, and then I'll just let you know about something that's coming way off but our ladies get really excited about that, and that is a district ladies retreat. It's all the way out in September, September 27th to the 9th, but I just want to put that out there for you, and um, you can see Devonna for, for more information about that. Devonna, would you raise your hand? Okay, and you can see her. Thank you uh, for leading that, and I just want to say again, thank you for being here today, and uh, let me pray for our time together as we worship the risen Savior today. God, we are grateful to be gathered in your name, a name that is above all names. And we're grateful that um, 
that you come and dwell with us. I even think about the idea that you came here before and you spoke to our hearts about being here this morning, and so you've prepared us in advance for these moments together. So as we worship you, may you receive our worship through the songs, through the word, through prayer as our act of worship to you today. And we just simply offer this time to you and say, here we are, Lord. We are yours. Have your way in our hearts today as we worship you. We pray this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Would you stand for worship? Good morning, everybody. How's everyone doing on this fine, sunny morning? Great. I'm very fired up this morning, and I'm very glad to be back and worshiping with you guys um, after being away for a week at District Assembly. I actually want to talk about that real quick uh, before I go ahead and get into the word here. Um, I, just, I thought it was really amazing to see the, the faith and the trust that so many people have in God over, like, District Assembly. And I never realized how much, you know, time, effort, work goes into church planning and even just, you know, the denomination of the Nazarene and as I learn more about that. Um, and I, I think one of the highlights for me over that weekend was just uh, seeing people being ordained as pastors. And it just made me really think about my own faith, being like, these, these people— are sacrificing, working hard, waiting patiently, and maybe some suffering through that, but dedicating their lives to follow Christ and now to spread the word and to spread the gospel. And I'm just sitting there just like in awe. I don't even know these people. And, you know, I'm sitting there like crying for them because I'm just like, wow. Like their faith is so strong and they believe in a God who can do anything. Um, And so as I was sitting in my bed last night trying to figure out what I wanted to read to you guys this morning, um, um, I opened my Bible to Psalms. Um, and what was there was, uh, uh, Psalm 40. I'm going to read Psalm 40, uh, verses one through three. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and he steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and amaze and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Um, I started doing some self-reflecting on myself on that last part, and it, again, just seeing how people putting their faith in God, you know, it was cool because I got to see God's work at hand and through his people and even through the teen ministry, uh, and I just thought that was awesome. You know, the Lord will provide, um, and he's just, he's just awesome. So I'm fired up, and I'm ready to worship with you guys this morning. So this first song is Alive and Breathing. So if you guys are feeling alive, and you are breathing. Let's praise the Lord this morning. Holds your heart and stirs your soul. Well, that is come to mind.
comes in the morning. Hope still walks with the hurting. And you're still alive and breathing. your great name, because you are the name above all names. You are great in every way. You're awesome in every way.
sent your son to die for us, the greatest sacrifice, the greatest love of all. So Lord, we lay ourselves down. We're here together as, as your family, your church body, your bride. And Lord, together we will be here to worship you, to honor you, to, to, to talk about you, to teach, to teach about you, spread the gospel, spread the good news. Lord, you are so great. Your love is great. And for that, we will be faithful because you're always faithful to us. You always provide. You never fail. You never let us down. You're our firm foundation. You're the rock on which we stand on. God, you're amazing. So amazing. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I may be seated. Hey, Junior Church, you're dismissed. Have fun, guys. We'll miss you. Oh, trash can down. So, if you're alive and breathing, give praise to God. I, I, I love that. Just I've been thinking about that since the first song. It's been bouncing around my brain. And then this morning, I don't know why, but it just came to my mind. I read this book a couple years ago. And in the book, the person talked about this idea that oftentimes uh, the the most the Bible that a non-believer will ever see or read will be what they see in believers, meaning that what other non-believers see in us. It's kind of a, a, a crazy concept. But then I started like kind of twisting it upside down on his head, and I was wondering, well, I mean, there are hard, rough seasons in a believer's life. And there are times I admit in my life where maybe I haven't dived into the word much as I would have liked. And I got to think, well, even in the community of believers, we have some people that need some encouragement. They need to see how God is working in their life and the lives of others. And we get to gather today as a community of Christ, as the body of Christ, to worship God and to point to how he's been working in our lives. And we have an opportunity to do that today as I just want to open the mic up and, and ask if anyone here is alive and breathing, does, would anyone like to give praise to how God has been working in their lives? And I'll come by and hand you the mic so our online people can hear you. And if you have something online in the chat, just type that in there and tell, tell us how God's been working in your life. We'd love to read that and see that. Hi, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to say something. Um, I was at District uh, Mission Advance last weekend also, and I just came back. I felt really refreshed in God and um, just excited again about maybe what he ha may have for me in the future. Um, but I'm just thankful and blessed, and I feel refreshed in him. And just uh, he talked about... Um, deep and wide, like our roots going down into the foundation of Christ. And um, it was just amazing to see everyone there and just to um, be refreshed. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Sean, and I want to add to that as well. First of all, I had the pleasure of sharing a room with Pastor Dale and Skyler and oh, Michael Brady and Three or four of us snored from what I understood, but, <laughs> but we, made, we made it through, and, we, and we, it was nice to be there, and as Becky pointed out, getting refreshed and being around other believers as well, and the sermons were great, the sharing was great, uh, as they said, deep and wide, and that's, that's a great feeling, and again, 
I want to encourage anyone who has never experienced, if you get an opportunity, it's a wonderful place to go, and it was really great. Wow, you hear right from Sean that you should go to district assembly next year. <laughs> anyone else? Uh, I'm Chris, and this is Chris and my wife in Memphis, and I just got to say, you know, we've been away for quite a few, kind of like probably most of us have strayed away from certain things in our life because the devil, you know, he gets a hand of us, and I just want to say that we're here, and I'm so glad to be here. I feel so good for being here today, and I thank each and every one of you guys for being a part of the I say it's a family, and I, I really love being here. And I, and before, you know, it was wonderful. But I want to say that I'm here to stay. So, thank you. And we're glad to have you. You? <laughs> okay. So, um. Last week I was kind of a mess, but the, I went to assembly as well, and um, I didn't want to go because I didn't know if I'd have care for my mom, but it, it worked out, and I knew I really needed that. I needed the refresher. I needed to get out of my own head and realize it's okay to worship God however you want. So I sat in. I'm going to grief share, which is is wonderful. It's a great great program, and um. I, I say this is something I never said I'd never do. I'm going to therapy, just therapy, just, you know. It's like that woman never talks. It's only me. So she just, um, but it is funny. It is, it's great, and she's, she's really good, and um, it's just really helped me to process. But I realized that I have to get out of my head, praise God however way we want to. If, if they're in here, because I was at assembly going, and, and I told him at, at Grief Share, I said, yes, I just want him to know Jesus. And I was like, praise Jesus. And they all laughed at me. Um, but it's just, um, it's, a, it's a blessing to, to go to something like that and to get refreshed and um, to just, you know, let your guard down and know that it's okay to be whoever you are. And this is a wonderful place to worship together. And I'm just very blessed to have my my friends here beside me and, and Lena. If you've ever watched Lena, Lena praises the Lord. So, so. Lena, do you want to say hi? Say hi. Nope. <laughs> awesome. Oh. Right here. My name is Barbara Ann. I've actually been a member of the church since 2007. <laughs> Found my membership certificate. <laughs> that was pretty cool. But I just want to praise God for giving me the crushing ability to be able to make it here on Sundays. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying not to get emotional. It's your fault, Pastor Dale. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you can let it rip, I can let it rip too. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I love you. But truly, this is the only place that I can physically make it to. And I, this is not a pity party. I don't want sympathy or anything like that. I want this is a praise Jesus, praise God moment. Because he has allowed me, I don't know how long I've been home from Florida, a couple of months at least, babe, going on three. And I've only missed two Sundays in all this time, and for me, that's a very big deal. I have to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning just to be out of the house by 20 after 9. But I just wanted to let you all know, I'm going to reiterate what Chris, I think his name was, what Chris said. This is a church family that once you walk through those doors, you never want to walk out. This is a very special place with very special people that all of their hearts are filled with the love of Jesus Christ. And I know that we all know this, but just a quick reminder that we all can only get to God through his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So, yeah, like Brady always says, let's praise God with all of our heart and all of our soul. And let's make sure that we allow God to keep our hearts, hearts of flesh. 
so that they're always soft and ready so that we can accept his love. And sometimes that love comes in tough ways, you know, like comes for me every day. But I'm going to continue to just praise God for, like the song said, I'm alive and I'm breathing on my own. Praise God. And I love you all very much. Thanks for being a wonderful family. I always end up saying something. <laughs> if you would have looked at me six years ago, and if somebody would have said to me that tomorrow I would be having a meeting to start up a recovery ministry surrounded by Jesus, I would have laughed. I completely laughed. I am so blessed to be able to be part of that ministry at all let alone to be leading it in a church someday, I never, ever thought that that would be possible or that would be a thing. So I am thankful that I have that opportunity in this church. Thank you, Ashley. Well, God is good all the time. All the time. Yeah, I've always wanted to do that. Anyways. Another part, aspect of gathering together as a community of Christ is we get to gather together and pray. We get to pray for the mission of God to advance here in Shippensburg, in the world, really. And we also get to pray together over each other in our lives and the struggles that we're going through. We get to celebrate, and we also get to lament and cry out and ask God to work because we know God is faithful to do so. And so I, you're going to hear my voice in this prayer, but I ask that you bow your heads and pray together with me as the body of Christ. Let's pray. God, we just thank you. We thank you and we're in complete adoration of the ways in which you have worked and moved in our lives. We're in complete adoration of you sending your son down to die for us on the cross and that we get to live in this resurrected life, that we get to live Easter here and now, God. We thank you for that. God, we, we thank you. But God, we, we also ask that, that Easter life, that resurrected life, that life of redemption and restoration that you promised for here on earth, God, we ask that you continue to work here in the world, that your mission continues to go throughout and bring peace and redemption and restoration, God. We ask that we may see that, God, but that we may also, as you have invited us to, participate in that mission here and now. But God, as we live in this broken world and we see your restoration happening, God, we are still affected by the brokenness. We still lose family members. God, I think of the, the Taylor family and the Blick family. Or really the Roberts family, God. I pray that you be with them all, all of those who have lost loved ones, like the Kunkelman family. God, I pray that you, your arms wrap around those families who have lost loved ones and those who are still grieving over lost loved ones, that you be with them, that you carry them through this, that your sustaining grace be with them, that your grace to be enough for them in this time. I pray for those who are dealing with cancer, God. I pray for people like Angie Reinhardt, Denny Bell, Connie Reisinger, God, I pray that you be with them in this time. That your healing hands touch upon them, whether it be through the doctors or through miraculous means outside of that, God. Either way, when healing involved, that's a miracle. And when healing and miracles are involved, God, that's you. And so we ask that you continue to move and work in those lives. Pray for those also dealing with health issues, God. Think of Tammy's sister, Tanya and her dad, Louis. Think of Tara's mom and cousin, Al Kressler. God, we have a, an abundance of people who are going through different struggles in their health. God, I ask that you continue to touch them, work through them, God. Help the doctors discern what's going on in, in people's lives, God. Help to keep them healthy. God, we know that you are a healing God. And so we have faith that you will do so. 
And we also pray for our spiritual health, though, for our churches, for the worlds, God, that we may know you more and more and more and more. And we pray for those who are serving in, our, in the army, God, who are serving our country. God, we pray for Levi Shoemaker. We pray for Jose Jean-Pierre, Justin Mason, Sam Hoover, and Liam Metchin serving the Air Force. God, we pray that you be with them and protect their hearts, protect them wherever they're at. May they know you, God. May they share you. May they represent you and reflect you to their comrades. Pray for the many ministries in Chippensburg. We pray for our church. We pray for Chambersburg Mosaic and what's going on there, God. We pray for the partnership there, God. We pray for our hearts to be moved and for the hearts of people in Chambersburg to be moved. We pray for the local gathering, God. May the, all of the churches, which are like 40, 50-something, God, may we, we just pray that your grace and love be expressed through them all, that we be conduits, of your love and grace, God. We pray for our ministries to do the same, our children's ministry, God. We pray for workers. We pray for people who have passion and burden for those, for those children. Because Jesus, we know that you had a passion and burden. So may you open our hearts to that same burden and passion, God. Pray for the youth ministry and as we're developing something that may be bigger than what we initially thought, God. We pray that we know that you there's nothing too big for you, God. There's nothing bigger. So we pray that you continue to work as we develop a youth ministry that honors and glorifies you. Pray for the Jack and Jill daycare and the campus ministry. And we pray for our mission, inviting people to journey along Jesus, God. Journey alongside us and experiencing your love, grace, and purpose for our lives. May we experience you more and more. We love you. We give you all of the praise. And God, we pray for those divine appointments, those times in which you are leading us to talk to someone and share you with them. Whether it be over a cup of coffee in the middle of the grocery store, wherever, God, may our hearts be open to your guidance. And God, we pray for the capital campaign and the Action Task Force that's meeting, that you be working and guiding them, directing us in a way that's going to honor and glorify you and advance your mission here on earth. And you properly use the gifts, the gift of this building for your mission. We thank you. We pray all of this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the one who always loves first. Amen. Oh, my wife's coming to read. I forgot that. That's nice. <laughs> All right. I'm reading Psalms 119, verses 105 to 112. I'll give you a minute to scroll. It's pretty long. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. I've promised it once, and I'll promise it again. I will obey your righteous regulations. I have suffered much, O Lord. Restore my life again as you promised. Lord, accept my offering of praise and teach me your regulations. My life constantly hangs in the balance, but I will not stop obeying your instructions. The wicked have set their traps for me, but I will not turn from your commandments. Your laws are my treasure. They are my heart's delight. I am determined to keep your decrees to the very end. This is the word of the Lord. Been in. <clears throat> To the idea that I need glasses when I'm reading scripture up here. I keep getting lost as I'm reading to you this morning. And this morning I mentioned earlier that we, uh, we are um, going to be in a, in a post-resurrection passage. It's very similar in some ways to the passage that Lisa uh, spoke from last week in, in John. But this passage is in Luke and it, it includes Jesus showing up to the disciples in in the uh, locked room and uh, speaking to them. But it's also uh, kind of a parallel to the passage 
in, he's waving his hands at me. I don't know, like what? I'm, I'm on. What? My batteries are loose. Okay, I'm trying. Are they in? Is that good? Do I need to pull, open it up? Wow, okay, let's take a commercial break here while we, while we fix this thing. Um, I'll try and do this while I'm, while I'm speaking to you, but uh, I don't know if I even know what I'm doing. Pushing the batteries in. Okay. Well, we got some of those batteries from back there instead of ones from up here. I don't know if that makes any difference. But. Okay, they're in about as much as they can go. Is it making a difference? Okay, we might want to try changing the batteries, and we, we'll work at that. But uh, as, as, as you're coming to help me with that, I'm just going to keep speaking. Um, and I, I just want to let you know this, this passage is also has some parallels to Matthew 28, um, the Great Commission found in Matthew 28. It's, it's Luke's version of the Great Commission, actually. So it includes that. And as I've been... Um, looking at this passage and, and reading it, it's kind of just jumped off the page to me in a different way. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something this morning that, that Ken's done already, and I'm, I'm, I'm just going to share with you my, my thoughts, my musings, if you will, from this passage. And, and uh, we're going to go about it that way. But first of all, um, we're going to switch some batteries out. He was drumming so hard in practice this morning that the drumsticks were coming apart. Can you believe that? Woo! Thank you, Colby. He's also our t tech guy in a way. So, yeah, we're good. Okay. So, uh, where was that? What was I saying? Oh, Luke. So, we're, I'm just going to share with you some thoughts from this passage as uh, it has kind of jumped out at me. And it's a little different maybe than what I would normally do in preaching, but the passage is, is Luke 24, and I need my glasses. No comments from the peanut gallery, please. Luke chapter 24, verses 36 uh, through 48. And Luke records this. He says, while they were saying these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were terrified and afraid. They thought they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you startled? Why are doubts arising in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. It's really me. Touch me and see, for a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones like you see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Because they were wondering and questioning in the midst of their happiness, he said to them, Do you have anything to eat? And they gave him a piece of baked fish. Taking it, he ate it in front of them. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law from Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. He said to them, This is what is written, The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead, and on the third day a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of the Lord, and we say, thanks be to God. <clears throat> As I was reading this, I really zoned in on Jesus' words, why are doubts still arising in your hearts? I don't know about you, but maybe I'm just speaking to myself, but I have doubts sometimes. Like, I doubt that the Cowboys are ever going to make the Super Bowl again. Yeah. 
Somebody's here to affirm that, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> but I have doubts. Sometimes there's a task in front of me, and I, I'm not sure if I'm qualified to do it, maybe, per se. Or sometimes there's even doubts about my faith. Sometimes I might have doubts. Is Jesus really present with me in this situation? I think, I mean, do you all struggle with some of the, not the Cowboys doubt, but there's other ones. There's other ones. Do you, do you resonate with that? Like, we, we are people who doubt, and I think it's just, for real, it's part of our humanity. We are people, and we, we doubt sometimes. But as I was reading this, and Jesus says to them, he says, why, why do you still have doubts? And then he talks to them about some very specific things, and I think what he's trying to say to them is, you can have doubts, but about these things, have no doubt about this. And one, the very first thing is, it's really me. It's me. Touch me. It's me. Now, in today's day and age, we... Jesus is no longer physically present with him, and so we can't touch Jesus and, and feel him, per se. But we do believe by faith that Jesus is with us through the power of his Spirit. He is with us. But yet, doubts arise in our hearts sometimes. How is it that we, we sense the presence of Jesus? And I want to say that one of the most powerful ways that we sense the presence of Jesus is what we just did before we prayed, and that's to share how Jesus has showed up in my life. And we kind of grasp a hold of that whenever you share, Jesus did this in my life, and I want to give him praise. It's, it's a way that we grasp a hold and say, yes, Jesus is real. I see him working in Connie's life. Praise be to God, yeah. right? Woo! Have no doubt about this. Jesus is among us. He's working and moving in our hearts and lives. He is real. Praise be to God. He wanted them to understand that. And not only that, that he would show up. Um, he, he opens their minds, it says, to, to understand the Scriptures. And he explains the Scriptures to them. I want to say this. Have, have no doubt about this. Jesus wants to reveal more and more of himself to us, and the easiest way for him to do that is for us to open up the Scriptures. In other words, if you're going to understand what Jesus has done for you, it's, in the, it's here. This is the story of God and his, his plan of redemption in and through Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, it's all right there, and it all points to me. And oh, by the way, I'm, I'm real, and I'm with you. I really like that text that Hunter's wife, right? He just wanted to say it. He just wanted to call Jess his wife. He did. But I really like the, the, the text that, that Jess read for us. Your word is a lamp before my feet and a light for my journey. I'm finding more and more in my life as I engage in the scriptures that God speaks to me. And that's something that Jesus is doing here. He shows up, but I want to say this. When Jesus shows up, he has something to say. And whenever we're in the Scriptures, we believe that this book is alive and breathing, that God's Word jumps off the page at us and speaks to us in real and powerful ways. For instance, during Holy Week, I was very intentional about being involved in some different services and kind of exploring. I'd never been to a Monday Thursday service, but on Monday Thursday, the Thursday of Holy Week, the, the scripture that I shared in men's prayer group was simply this. It was from John 13, which is the focus of Monday thir services now that I've been to one and know what they're about. It is the foot washing. And Jesus says to his disciples, <clears throat> as I have washed your feet, so too you must wash each other's feet. And I, for some reason, it just hit me. This is, this is part of the, the Last Supper. And I, many times as I stand at the communion table, I remind you that at the Last Supper, Jesus broke bread with disciples who would betray him, 
who would deny him, who would scatter at, at the sign of trouble. And yet he broke bread with them and he gave them the communion meal. But not only that, he washed the feet of the one who would deny him. He washed the feet of the one who would betray him. He washed the feet of the one who would scatter whenever he was in trouble. And I'm going, oh, uh, am I supposed to wash the feet of somebody who might betray me? Well, I didn't like that question. But I was kind of pondering that, and I went to this Monday Thursday service, and, and they offered this time of foot washing, and I thought, man, if there is somebody here that I'm at odds with, I'm going to wash their feet. But I didn't know most of the people because it wasn't, I just didn't know most of the people. And I thought, well, I'm just going to stay here and reflect. And as I reflected on that passage, I realized God spoke to me again, and I realized that Peter didn't want Jesus to wash his feet, but Jesus insisted, and I was thinking about that. I'm like, oh, you know what? In order for Peter to love others as Jesus loved him, he had to let Jesus love him. And it was like in that moment God said, Dale, how are you letting me love you? And that's the response he got. Couldn't really give an immediate response. And so I started to ponder that and ponder that and think about, like, man, that's, that's how am I letting God love me so that I can love others as he first loved me? And the reality is, as I started to, as I was reading through the Psalms, thanks to some young people over here who have taken me on a journey of reading through the Scriptures, thank you for that. I'm reading through the Psalms, and all of a sudden God started to speak through the Psalms. This is... This is a way that I love you, and you can let me love you. By, by placing myself in his hands, by putting myself in his care, by actually also by learning more about who he created me to be as a way that I can love him or let him love me. I'm like, wow. So the Scripture comes, all that to just say, the Scripture comes alive when we engage in it, and God speaks. It's a light for our Next step, it's a, it's a lamp for our next step and a light for our journey. And I, I think about that passage, your word is a lamp before my feet and a light for my journey. And if you just look through the rest of that passage very quickly, when we are suffering, God's word is a lamp for our next step. And it reminds us that we're on a journey. This moment in time is not the end. We're on a journey. So when we're suffering, his, his word will give us guidance for our next step and remind us of the journey that we're on with him. This moment of suffering is not the end for us. The, the psalmist says, when I'm constantly in danger, I won't forget your instruction. When, when we face dangers in life, when things are coming at us, God can guide us through His Scripture, through the Word. When the wicked has set a trap for me, His Word is a lamp for our next step, and it's a light for the journey, and His Word then becomes the very joy of our heart. Have no doubt about this. God wants to reveal Himself to you through His Word. This is like God's story. It's the story of God's plan of redemption for His world, for each and every part of His world, for His creation, for humanity. And when we read it, I think this is what we find. We find out that our story is wrapped up in His story. And it reveals to us everything we need to know about His plan of salvation for us. Praise be to God. Have no doubt about it. He wants to speak to us through his word. Your sins are forgiven. 
your sins are forgiven. I thought I'd hear an amen or a praise the Lord or a hallelujah. Your sins are forgiven. Jesus wants to make sure that his disciples knew this. Have no doubt about this. Your sins are forgiven. Praise be to God. The whole crux of the Scriptures points to it. That on the cross and through His resurrection, there is the possibility of a change in, in, of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins. Now, I mean, maybe, I feel like sometimes we have, we have doubts about this. I just feel like we do, and somebody was even hitting on it. Hunter, it might have been you as you were talking. I don't know. But it just feels like as, as I'm journeying with, with you, um, with, with fellow believers, that sometimes we just, we just don't fully grasp the immensity of Christ's love for us through the forgiveness of sins. And so I have a little... Uh, demonstration here. So, I've seen this, and maybe I've even gone down this road my own self. I'm following Jesus, and I mess up, and I slip up. And there's a certain amount of guilt and shame come with that. And so sometimes our first reaction is like, no, I shouldn't have done that. You didn't see that, Josh. You didn't see that. Nah. And so we start walking around carrying this, this sin, which comes with guilt and shame. And, you know, this is going to get heavy after a while. It's not too bad right now. But the longer I carry that, the heavier it gets. And I know that sometimes we're, we're walking along and, you know, we're, we're hiding that sin and, Something else happens, and it kind of leads down a path to this more sin, but we quickly hide that. You didn't see that, Patty. We know God didn't see it. No, he didn't see it. We just keep carrying it around. We start to feel very shameful about these things. Starts getting heavier. Then Satan starts to get into our head. Oh, man, you've really done it now, Dale. Man, I don't know if God can forgive you for that. We keep carrying that around, and I find that if we don't do something with that, we're inclined to sin more. It gets heavy. Now, that's getting, like, too much. I'm going to have to start start using this like a real backpack now. Uh oh, didn't think about that part. <laughs> Usually not carrying a mic around when I sin. Yeah. <laughs> and we start to carry that around and it's heavy. And here's here's let's talk. Why is it so heavy? Not because of the weight, because it's like bricks, but why is it heavy? It's because sin has caused a separation in my relationship with God, and I know it. It's like it's heavy. It might have caused a, a, a strain on a relationship with another human being. That gets heavy. It may have led to something that's really hurt my life. It was destructive in my life. And, and now I'm struggling with that and trying to clean that up. And, and before you know it, we're just... i gotta, I got to sit down. It's heavy. Man. We, we, we start to live this life where I'll explain my experiences where we feel like we're alone. We're not only separated from God, people might not know who we are anymore because we're hiding stuff. Jesus suffered, died, and rose from the dead on the third day that a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins 
is available. Let's not doubt that. Let's not doubt that. And whenever we recognize there, there is sin in our life, and even if we've been carrying it around for a while, there's this, I, this thought that the reality of this is that Jesus, not the cross, but Jesus on the cross bore the weight of my sin. So I don't have to. Praise be to God. So what I need is to simply, to simply turn to Him. To have a change of heart and life and turn from my sin and turn to Him. Jesus is more always pleased at a heart that turns back to Him. Always. Not maybe. Always. Have no doubt about that. Praise be to God. I love, and I don't even know who to give credit this quote to anymore. Because I've been using it a lot, but... He said this. It's a book that Hunter wrote, read, and he wrote. Oh, maybe I give creds to Hunter. Whew. You didn't know we had an author in the, in the group. But he read this book, and he shared it with me, and, and the author said this. He said, uh, I find that whenever there is sin in my life, rather than focusing on the sin and walking around and trying to hide it, right, I find that I need to focus back on my relationship with Jesus Christ. In other words, when there is sin in my life, I need to turn from it and turn back to Jesus because He already bore the weight of that sin. And He's ready and willing to forgive us when we just simply turn back to Him. Praise be to God. There is forgiveness of sins through a change of heart and life. Praise be to God. Now, I, I really think this. Well, let me ask, ask you this question. Where are you going to be tomorrow? This time, tomorrow. Where are you going to be? Just somebody shout it out. Everybody's at work? Not everybody. <laughs> Class, home, school, teaching. I believe this passage says that this message of forgiveness through a change in heart and life must be preached in His name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. Jerusalem is right where the disciples were. That's where they were when He said these words. So I want to say this. I believe that right where you'll be tomorrow, or even this afternoon, someone bears the heavy weight and burden of sin in their life. Now we could, we could go to them and we could say, hey, um, you know, you shouldn't be living that way. You really need to stop it. Put some more weight on them. Right? Or we could, we could uh, come alongside them and say, you know, you don't have to bear the weight anymore. You don't have to. Because Christ already, already bore that weight for you. Now, I'm, I'm going to share with you a video and uh it's a it's a video by uh the speaker is doug Pollock, and i'm looking for this guy and uh he's the author of this book maybe he can just maybe advance the slide for me that'd be fine uh doug Pollock. so he, he wrote this the book god space and in that book it's really he's just talking about how do we create space to share the good news of Jesus. And this particular story that he's telling, the, the background of the story is, he decided, so he's, a, he's an evangelist for uh, Athletes in Action, I think it's called. But yeah, and uh, so he's an evangelist by trade, um, if you will. But he decided they were going to build a house, and he got this brain uh, idea that he was going to be the general contractor. And he was going to do that because he knew that while his house was being built, there would be people, contractors coming in that didn't know Jesus. And it would be an opportunity for him to build relationships with them and to, uh, to share the good news of Jesus. And so uh, this is a, this kind of, this is, we're jumping right into that story, so to speak. So check out this uh, video.
these guys were all acknowledging they were going to hell. And so here's what my wondering question sounded like that day. And I said, Ron, I meet a lot of people in my line of work who are pretty sure they're going to heaven. I don't meet many people that are as confident as it sounds like you and your friends are that they're going to hell. I'm just wondering, Ron, why are you so convinced you're going to hell? That was the question. And guess what? That question was totally authentic. I had spent a week wondering about that, and I was curious about that. I wonder why they're so convinced they're going to hell. And I wanted to find out about that. So when I asked that question, Ron immediately said, well, if you knew me, Doug, you wouldn't ask the question. And I said, Ron, I really don't know you, but I'm still wondering. Ron looked at me and said, hey, Doug, you ever heard of the Hell's Angels? I said, I sure have. He said, well, I was involved in a biker gang, just kind of one step below the Hell's Angels. And uh, let's just say I've been there and done it all. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't know that I even want to know what been there and done it all really means. I may have a mayhem axe murder on my job site. I don't know. But I did some listening. Remember I said in a good conversation, we get to listen well. That's one pedal on the bicycle. The other pedal is then we get to wonder after we've listened. So I did some listening. And I said, Ron, it sounds like you're convinced that you're going to hell because you've done some things that you know God is probably not pleased with and you're just going to take it like a man. I said, Ron, I'm just wondering, has anyone ever shared with you what God has done to remove your uh, death sentence that you're walking under and living under to actually give you a life sentence so that instead of you walking around with this whole idea of impending judgment upon your life, has anyone ever shared the good news of what Christ has done to remove that so you can have a life sentence instead? He said, no, let me stop here. Here is the place where I think it's so important we always ask for permission. I said, Ron, could I share that with you? In other words, I didn't wanna just, I, I, I don't know if you guys are like me, I get so excited when someone just shows just a little bit of interest that I wanna biggie size this spiritual meal that I oversupply and kill the demand. What I did instead is I just asked for permission to see if he was interested. And he gave me the green light. And so I was very careful to in one minute very succinctly share the good news of how Christ's perfection was offered up to cover up his imperfection. And so instead of having a death sentence, Christ would actually remove his sins as far as the east to the west and that Ron now could have a fresh heart and a clean, for a clean start and that Ron could actually now have a life sentence instead of a death sentence. When I got done sharing this one minute, what I call a spiritual appetizer with Ron, he looked at me and he said, well, I guess there is hope for me. A lot of times, the kingdom of God advances one conversation at a time, one aha at a time. Ron was not ready to become a Christian right there in that day on the spot. But you know what? He was willing to hear good news. And the good news I share with him in just a minute long conversation caused him from going to think that I am definitely on my way to hell to think that maybe there is hope for me. A couple, couple things about that video if you didn't pick it up. He's big on we, we need to listen first. Uh, build relationships with people, listen, um, and whenever there's an opportunity, then we speak, and often by asking questions. And, and so it was almost like his contractor friend was leading the conversation in a way, um, and he was just working off of the answers that uh, Ron had given them that. And I especially like, I resonate with this gentleman um, about biggie sizing the meal versus giving a spiritual appetizer. And that's an area that I need to, you know, work at. Just giving, just giving somebody a, a little bit uh, that points them towards the truth that Jesus died for their sins, that they might be forgiven and live a new life in Him. Praise be to God. I, I just want to spend a moment here talking to you about. Uh, I've been thinking about the, this whole idea 
that, um, man, we have these opportunities in our everyday lives. And, uh, and so I'm going to talk to you about our, um, our map or our strategy for, um, com- uh, yeah, for completing the mission of uh, Ship Nazarene, which is to invite others to journey with Jesus and experience his love, grace, and purpose for their life. One of the key ways that we can do that is in Jerusalem, right where we are. Uh, building relationships with an intentionality for Jesus Christ. To, be, to be, build relationships and be a good listener. And as we hear where people are at, and as we hear possibly ways that God's already working in their life through his pre- prevenient grace, pointing Jesus out to them and allowing them to find their way to Jesus Christ. Um, it's, a key, it's a key place in our workplaces, in our schools, in our neighborhoods, in our homes even. And then we've, we've been working on some service opportunities, and in uh, the month of May, we're going to be doing a um, appreciation for the daycare once again. We did that last year, and we're going to do it here in May. And I've been thinking about that. When we, and Love Our Towns coming up, when we go out to serve, it puts us in a position, in a place where we get to meet new people. And we can be intentional in those places of service um, to, to quite literally build relationships that, that give us opportunities to share Jesus with other people. And so um, I just uh, want to say this, have no doubt about this. Jesus is real and he's present. Have no doubt about this. Jesus wants to speak to you on a regular basis. He wants to have a a close relationship with you. Have no doubt about this. Scriptures is one of the ways in which he speaks very clearly to us. Have no doubt about this. He has forgiven your many sins. He bore the weight of our sins on the cross that you might have new life in him. And have no doubt about this. He wants each and every one of us to share that news wherever we are, wherever we are, that other people might find the love of God and embrace it in their lives and that they might have the peace that comes with being in a relationship with you. It's like he said to the disciples, peace be with you. People are looking for hope. People are looking for peace are looking for the love of Christ, and they might not even know it, but you might be the vessel of God that helps them to see it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Have no doubt about that, and go as his witnesses. Amen? I'm going to ask the worship team if you would come as we continue to worship. I ask that you stand if you're able. hearing uh, what he had to say, introducing it, and uh, um, just the time he was going through with it. Um, uh, Emily's the one who brought this song up to us, uh, and I've been listening to this song a lot, too, and um, I always heard a bunch of songs about, um, you know, God dressing the flowers and, you know, looking at the sparrow and not, not worrying about what the next day will bring, and I never really quite understood it because, you know, I just wasn't in my word that much, um, but getting into scripture and understanding the words, like, we, we don't have to worry, we don't have to doubt. God tells us all the time, and Jesus tells us all the time that it's, we don't have to worry, um, and he loves us, and, you know, our sins are forgiven. Um, so for those who were here last week, you know, you know this song, Sing Along. For those who haven't heard it before, well, it's a great song.
for those who don't have a way. You provide the way, you provide the light because you are the light. Not some other light over here that's just going to distract us from going this way, but your light is clear, it is true, it is bright. You will provide. You keep your promise to us. So church, let's sing this song together. You are here, moving in our midst, and I worship you, and I worship you. You are here, working in this place, I worship you. Moving 
a way, the one who performs miracles, God above all God, may he bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. We have the best news in the world. Go and share it with those who need to hear it. Praise be to God. Amen.